So I want you to go ahead and turn to your neighbor. I know you may have to scream across the aisle, yell across the aisle, but go ahead and tell somebody you're at the right place at the right time. Come on, tell somebody now. Come on, you're at the right place at the right time. Right place at the right time. I wish y'all could have seen Wednesday night. This altar was filled up on Wednesday night. You say, Brian, you give altar calls on Wednesday. Anytime I'm behind the pulpit, there's going to be an altar call. Because <laughs> you know what? Here, I'd be a fool to stand here today and think everybody's saved. I'd be crazy. I think that's the problem with Kentuckians. Everybody goes to church, and even if you don't go to church, they're still saved in Kentucky. Y'all know that? Every obituary that I've ever read in the, in the newspaper, everybody was a faithful church member. That's a lie. It's a lie. And I go to, I go to funerals. I, I went to one yesterday. I had a funeral yesterday. Went there. And I'm telling you, it was, it's amazing how people talk. Boy, I hope they went to heaven. Boy, I hope they knew Jesus Christ. Here, I'm going to tell you all today. If you come to my funeral and somebody says, boy, I hope he knew Jesus Christ, <laughs> something ain't right. Because here's the deal. I know Jesus Christ. I'm born again. People shouldn't have to go to a funeral and say, boy, I hope they made it to heaven. You are preaching your funeral right now by you being here. People will know. They'll recognize you. They'll know the activity of Christ inside of you. How you act, watch this. Somebody's watching right now. How you're acting, how you deal with your faith, how you deal with your problems, how you deal with your issues, how you deal with your children, how you deal with your depression. Somebody is watching you at all times. I want to tell you now what God's laid on my heart for the vision of 2018. We always, since I've been your pastor, I've always taken the month of January, and we've always shared our vision, our heart, where Elkhorn Baptist Church is going in 2018. Now, I'm excited about this, and so I want to share it with you. The vision and the heartbeat of 2018 is going to be this. Y'all ready? It's, we're going to have an inside-out year of increase. An inside-out year of increase. Everybody say, inside-out. Come on, inside-out. Year of increase. That's what we're going to have. We're going to have an inside-out year of increase. Let me go ahead and break it down to you, Elkhorn style. We're going to have an increase, hallelujah, in everything that we put our hands to. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The favor of God is going to increase in our life. The tithes and offerings here at Elkhorn Baptist Church is going to increase in Jesus Christ's name. Your health is going to increase in Jesus Christ's name. Salvations and baptisms are going to increase in Jesus Christ's name. Everything, the children in our youth ministries are going to increase in Jesus Christ's name. I hope y'all are getting this this morning, because this is it. Everything is going to increase. Everything. Everything. Say, Brian, how you know? Because God never takes away, he always adds. God always adds. He never takes away. Now, I said this before, and I'm going to tell you again. What's the cross? Is it a minus sign or a plus sign? He died on a plus sign. He died on a cross that represented a plus sign. So this is going to be the year of increase. Everybody say increase. Come on, everybody say increase. I got five people participating. Increase. Everybody say increase. increase. I'm going to stop right now because I feel like I'm pushing a chain this morning. Feels like I'm pushing a chain. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like I'm pushing a chain up here. You say, well, Brian, this is the 8 o'clock service. You better get over that. Listen, God is alive, y'all. I don't care if you're 55, above 55, or 95. Listen, we got, we've got to participate in the activity of Jesus Christ. We've got to. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, as I, as I preach this word, God, I just pray right now, God, to give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God, I'm not asking people to stand up and hoop and to holler. I'm just asking, God, just to be a part of heaven, just to participate. So, God, I call things right now to God that, that are not as though they are. God, I pray right now believing that, God, something supernatural is going to take place. And, Lord, we're fighting. <laughs> Lord, we're in a battle right now. Satan hates the Elkhorn Baptist Church. He hates what you're doing here at this church. He hates that people are being saved and the baptistry staying filled up. So, Lord, I just pray right now to God that, Lord, 2018, I know what you spoke into my spirit, God. But Lord, 2018 will be the year of increase from the inside out. So God, right now, whatever we have on the inside of us, God's going to come through us. So Lord, just help me today to preach and Lord, to love and Lord, to preach a, a, a gospel that changes lives. So Lord, help me, bless me. 
Lord, let me, let me just preach your word, what you have given me. So, Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. 1 Samuel chapter 16, just one little verse. I love this verse because it, it, it makes me realize that a lot of people who are around, whether it be in church or the community, they'll look at your outsides. They'll look how smart you are. They'll try, watch this, people will try to intimidate you with their education. People will try to use their intellectualism to try to make you, make you feel like you're less than. People will say, well, I've got my doctorate degree, or I've got my master's degree, or I've got my bachelor's degree, and they'll, they'll, they'll try to intimidate you with the degrees that are hanging on the wall. But watch 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And I love this, because this verse right here helps me. The Bible says, 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, I love this, Do not look at his appearance, or at his physical stature. Because I have refused, listen to this, rejected him. For the Lord does not see as a man sees. Hallelujah. God does not see how we see. Somebody, y'all better get this this morning. Well, I've got it figured out. Watch it. God does not see how man sees. We look at the temporal things while God looks at the eternal things. We look at today, and God says, I've already made today. I've got eternity figured out. I love this. Listen to me. Man looks at the outer appearance, but God says, I've rejected him. I've rejected the outside. For God does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outer appearance. Watch this. But the Lord looks at the heart. Oh, yeah. The Lord looks at your heart. How many of you are thankful that God doesn't look how smart you are, how you dress this morning on the outside, how many friends you have on Facebook, or how many degrees you have hanging on the wall? Because man will look at the outside and say, boy, they're well put together. But here's what I have found out after 22 years of ministry. Those who look like they've got everything figured out is the ones that are breaking down on the outside, and they're the ones that are breaking down on the inside when nobody's looking. It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. God says, I don't look at your outside. Watch this. The in, watch. The outside world does not matter. God says, I'm concerned what's going on on the inside of you. On the inside of you. And I, I, I praise God for that because here's the deal. I, I have people all the time say, how come you don't wear a suit and tie? How come you don't do this? How come you don't do that? How come you don't do this? And I'm sitting there going because God didn't tell me to. And we have twisted the Bible and made the Bible come to us when God says, no, 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 I'm not worried about at the outside. I'm worried about your heart. Because if I can get your heart, the outside will line up. Hallelujah. It's your heart. Everybody say, it's my heart. It's your heart. Psalms 103 verse 1. I love this too. I just love the Bible. It just helps me. Psalm 103 verse 1. It says these words. Bless the Lord. Everybody say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Watch what this is. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. He says, bless the Lord with your soul. Bless the Lord with all of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now, listen, I'm going to get some people right here. Well, it, it, they're too emotional. Well, y'all would have had a problem with Jeremiah. He was called the weeping prophet. He preached for 120 years and never led a soul to Jesus Christ. But you know what? When he looked at people, he says, I love them so much, I'm going to cry over their souls. God says, when you bless me, you bless me with all your mind, your will, and your emotions. Hallelujah. I I'm so thankful that some people's not lost their tears. I'm so thankful that some people's not lost their fears. And I am so thankful that some people have not lost their ears. Because when you lose your ears, your fears, and your tears, you messed up. You've messed up. I just, here's what I feel about America. I'm going, I know y'all didn't ask me, I'm going to tell you. America is so blessed, we think we don't need God no more. We're so blessed. 
We don't even ask God about nothing anymore. We don't ask God, is this right? Should I buy this? Should I get this? Should I date them? Should I not date them? Should I marry them? And then the next thing you know, we don't ask Him, but we blame Him. We blame Him for everything in our life, but we don't ever go to Him to get any, ask any questions. He says, bless the Lord with your mind, your will, and your emotions. Listen to this. And all that is within me. What if I told you whatever's in you is going to come out of you? Bless his holy name is what it says. God said, listen to this. God said, you bless me with all that you got. All that you got. I'm going to ask y'all, have y'all blessed God? Brian Rafferty, have you really blessed God with all that you got? No, I have not. I have not. And see, this sermon, it's already convicted my spirit. Because I know that God is worthy, hallelujah, of all my praise. I know that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I know in my mind and even in my heart, he could come back right now. Would he be proud of how I've worshipped him this morning? I want to ask you a question. So God says, bless me with all you got, but your praise is going to come from the inside. How come pre people don't praise him? Because they don't have a praise on the inside. And I'm going to ask y'all a question, so you can write this down if you're a note taker. How's your insides this morning? How's your insides this morning? How's your heart this morning? How are you glorifying God on the inside with your heart this morning? This is tough, isn't it? This is tough. I'm glad I'm at the 8 o'clock service. Hopefully y'all can handle this. See, it's easy to stand. So easy to stand. It is easy for me to get up here and if there's words on the screen to raise my hand. It is so easy to look on the screen and see the words up there and repeat the words that's on the screen. How many of y'all know that's truth? <laughs> but it's so easy also to have mouth service and not heart service. So easy. How many of you know it's so easy to fake and con Christians? It is. Lord, just wear a suit and carry a King James Bible and you're a Christian. Lord, if you go to church, it means everybody's saved. It's not. You know how I'm preaching this morning? Every one of you's lost. <laughs> you say, Brian, you just offended me. No, I'm trying to help you. I, I got a person in my family. She'll tell me these words. Brian, I had a preacher come to my house one day, one Saturday. He knocked on the door. I let him in. And he, he asked me, was I saved? I told him no. And, and he said, well, say this prayer with me. I said the prayer. And here's the problem. Nothing's changed in her life. She don't go to church. She don't read her Bible. She's not active. She, she cusses like a sailor. She drinks like a fish. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just crazy. But to her, and here's the sad part, she is spiritually blind because she thinks she's saved. And I've had a talk with her. And I said, do you really think you know Jesus Christ? And she says, yes. And I'll say, here, let me show you something in the Bible. Where is your fruit? Where is your evidence? Where is your praise? Where is your conviction at? There is a lie in this world that says, just go to church. Be a tither. Get active and you're saved. That is a lie from the pits of hell. True transformation, watch me, will come from inside. You'll realize that things ain't right in your life. And you'll say, God, forgive me of my sins. Redeem my spirit and my soul, God. Lord, I confess that I am a sinner, but I am in need of a Savior, God. Forgive me, God, and save me. At that moment, if your heart, watch this, here's the scary part. John chapter 6 says, if the Holy Spirit is not dealing with you, you can't be saved. That's why there's so many false conversions at church. Because watch, they want to make it a work. I done something bad last night, so I need to come to church on Sunday. And all of a sudden, they'll start feeling something. And next thing you know, they'll walk the aisle and there'll never be a transformation out there. So that's false conversion. That is false conversion. And I know you don't hear sermons like this a lot. But listen, I don't want to be a pastor that's leading a church that has false conversions. I want to be a pastor that loves God so much that I'll preach truth to you. 
and that you understand that you've got to be, the Holy Spirit's got to be working in you. There's got to be a conviction in you before there's ever a transformation in you. Somebody say amen. So easy. So easy. God doesn't want an outward show. He don't. God does not want an outward show. God wants his praise, your praise to come from your heart. To be heartfelt praise. To see, see the real you. Watch this. The real you is inside of you. Watch this. The real you is inside of you. It sure is. It sure is. See, it is possible. I wrote this down. It is possible to have ministry, a ministry that is growing outwardly and for you to be shrinking inwardly. Because watch, if, if you've got a big church, everybody thinks, oh boy, they got something going on. It is very possible to have a, a, a big church, a big congregation, outwardly, and then you be dying spiritually on the inside, inwardly. See, the truth is, the more God blesses you outwardly, the more you should humble you inwardly. That's right. The more God blesses us, it should humble us. Because we know that we don't deserve everything that God has given us. But God loves us so much. He sent his best and not his leftovers. God didn't give us what was left over. God says, I'm going to send you my best because I believe in you. See, it's amazing when, when Christians and churches start living from the inside out. That's my prayer. The Elkhorn Baptist Church will start living from the inside out. Our leadership, inside out. Your pastor, inside out. Children's ministry, have an inside out children's ministry. Have an inside out church service. That Listen, what you brought in here today, could it be, could it be, the reason why you're not worshiping, me too, it's because we have allowed what's happening to our outside affect our insides. When in all reality, we should be saying we're so blessed that our insides should be rubbing out on our outsides. That when we come in here and you say, Brian, I just don't do it. Sometimes I make myself praise. How about y'all? Sometimes I say, you know what? I really don't feel like this morning, but I'm standing up anyhow. Why? Because my outsides, Jimmy, would never tell my spirit what to do. My spirit tells my, my outside what to do. Somebody say amen. And let me, let me tell you this real quick. I know y'all may not like this, but this is so true. <laughs> See, what you put in is what you're going, what's going to come out. Would y'all agree with that? Whatever you put in is what's going to come out. If Jesus is in you, he will come out of you. Come on. If Jesus is in us, he'll come out of us. But if you have bitterness... If bitterness is in you, bitterness is going to come out of you. So listen, ever how you're acting right now, that's what's in you. It's so true. It's so true. See, nobody has to listen to this. How many of y'all know this is when somebody catches a stomach bug or they get sick or they get a virus? Nobody has to teach that person how to throw up. It's okay. It, I thought first service would get this, man. Come on, church, good graces. Nobody has to go take a vomit one-on-one -on -one class. See, listen, when you truly get sick, come on. Y'all look at me like, I can't believe he said vomit. Yes, I sure did. Listen, when you truly get sick on the inside, it comes out on the outside. You can't stop it. Oh, y'all are sitting there like, well, y'all get this in just a minute. Hang on. Y'all will get this in just a moment. When you truly get sick and it's on the inside of you, whatever's on the inside of you, you can't stop. Hey, you can't stop it coming on the outside of you. Now let me give you, I'm going to get you. I'm gonna get, we're going to get here. Same way with Jesus. Why are you so excited? Why does your face turn red? Why is your ears sticking out? I don't know, but here, I love God. He's on the inside of me. You say, well, Brian, I'm never going to act like that. I'm not asking you to act like me. I'm asking you to act like the Bible. Here's what the Bible says. Listen to this. Watch what Jesus says. This is so good because Rafferty didn't say this. This is what the Bible says. John 7, 38. He who believes in me. How many of y'all believe in Jesus Christ? Even the devil does. I hope you, Matt, you, you believe in him. All right. Listen, we're going to participate. I'll call you out. 
How many of y'all believe? Because well, what if you was in heaven and God says, do you believe in my son, Jesus Christ? Or are you just going to go? Y'all won't. How many of y'all believe in Jesus Christ? That's good. That's good. I'm, that's good. You see, here's the deal. I'm not going to wait till I die to celebrate heaven. I'm not going to wait till I, they put me in a casket and push me down this aisle and put, I've already made my funeral arrangements, by the way, and put me right here in front, right here. And then somebody says, well, I, I'm not going to wait till I'm dead to try to start living. I'm going to live while I'm alive. I'm going to bless God while I've got breath in my lungs. I'm going to give God a shout if nobody else will give him a shout. I'm going to praise what nobody else will praise. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Watch this, John chapter 7, verse 38. He who believes in me, that's me, that's you. As the scripture has said, as the Bible has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Not a stagnant pond. Y'all hear me? Rivers. Rivers. It's all going to the river. Come on. River. You say, Brian, I don't believe that. I'm telling you, the Bible says, he who believes in me, out of their heart will flow rivers of living water. Listen, church, we're not dead. We are alive. We're, we're not a church that's just sitting on the side of the highway looking for something to do. We believe today that souls will be saved and lives will be changed. We're believing at Elkhorn Baptist Church that we're going to have an inside-out year of increase. Everything is going to increase in Jesus Christ's name at Elkhorn Baptist Church. Everything. And watch this. If you don't believe it, I believe it. Men and women, boys and girls, churches, people, they don't dictate me. I read the Bible. I've read the Bible. And hallelujah, I don't have to fake it on the outside when I've got something on me real on the inside. Uh. See, my praise, I wrote this down. My praise is as natural to me as breathing. My praise is as natural to me as it is breathing. My prayer life, do I struggle? Watch this, yes, but watch this, I breathe. Sometimes that, that cold air outside will take my breath away, but I still breathe. Sometimes the devil will try to knock me down and knock me out, but guess what? I still breathe. There's going to be things and times in our life where we're going to feel like that, that Satan has knocked the wind out of us, but we're going to breathe. My praise is easy. It comes to me just as my breath, like watch this, that's my praise. It comes that easy. You say, Brian, you're crazy. No, I'm telling you. It's the truth. We have allowed our flesh to override our spirits. We have allowed the outside circumstances to dictate the inside praise of our life. And it should never happen. How I many of you know I'm preaching, I'm preaching truth? Coming to church to me is as, it's as, as natural to me as breathing. Watch this. I don't wake up on Sunday morning and say, well, do I got to go to church today? Watch this. You're the preacher. I don't care if I wasn't your preacher. I'm going to church. I've made my mind up. Coming to church is like me breathing. Coming to church and reading my Bible, saying my prayers, loving and encouraging people. It don't come easy, but watch this. It's, it's like me breathing. It's like me breathing. Well, sometimes people knock the breath out of you. Yeah. Some, will people talk about you? Yeah. Will people throw you down? Yeah. Watch this. I'm still standing. I'm still breathing. And I'm telling you, it's, listen, it's got to become to you. Praise is a weapon. And we may not understand that, but listen to me. How in the world... Is it that natural to you? Because, listen, I have a river flowing in me. You do too. We have a river. And my spirit, I'm telling y'all, is in flood state. Mm. My spirit is in flood state right now. My spirit, I'm, I'm saying, well, Brian, do you ever get down? Absolutely, but I get back up. 
Do you have bad days? Absolutely. But what? I get back what? Up. Do you get mad? Yes, but I get glad. Absolutely. This is life. God didn't say it was going to be easy. He just said it was going to be worth it. It's just all this this journey, this church of time. God is keeping up with this stuff. God knows your heart. God knows everything you're thinking right now. Good, bad, or ugly. He knows it all. And I'm just telling you, my, my spirit, my, my, my attitude is changing. Everything, I'm telling y'all, I'm just telling y'all where your pastor's at. I'm excited to be in the season where I'm at. Because I know there's bad seasons out there. Some of, I know I can hear some of you now. Well, Brian, I've been in this season for six years. But what if I told you the seventh year was your breakthrough? What if I told you that this season that you have been in, because of the flood state that is in your spirit, that you have not allowed the drugs or the alcohol or anything that is surrounding your outsides dictate what God is doing on the inside. But because you've got a river, because it is in flood state, because it is overflowing, it's going to mess up, hallelujah, your outsides in Jesus' name. I'm trying. I'm trying, God. Hallelujah. We've got God, we've got Jesus, we've got the Holy Spirit. Every day I've got to, I've got to say this, greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. Every day I quote that over my life. Every day I am the head and I'm not the tail. God says, I'll bless you going in and I'll bless you coming out. I'll bless you in the cities and I'll bless you in the field. No weapon formed against you, Brian Keith Rafferty, shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you shall cease at the name of Jesus Christ. Brian, how come you can quote that? Because I say it every day of my life. I quote scripture over my life. This week alone, this week alone, two people text me and they said, Brian, I don't want to live no more. I'm ready to go, go to heaven. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? Evidently, God's not ready for you to be in heaven because he's not dismissed you yet, sir. There's still a soul sitting beside you. And I told this person, I said, your kids haven't gave up and they don't need their daddy to give up. We've got a job to do. And it is more than coming to church or teaching Sunday school or even preaching the Word of God. This is the icing on the cake today. I'm going to, hey, I'm going to take what God has given me today, apply it to my insides, and let my insides work through the outsides. Are y'all getting this today? Say amen. Hallelujah. Whew, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know so, sometimes I feel so silly standing here. I do. I'll leave you with this. I'm not even getting in there. I'll leave you all with this. If the Holy Spirit is inside of you, if the Holy Spirit, how many of y'all know if you're saved, the Holy Spirit lives he don't come and go. He, do, he does not, like in the Old Testament, Jimmy, the Holy Spirit would come and go to and fro, to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. New Testament grace, now God says, I'm going to put him inside of you. I'm going to put him inside of us. Jimmy, right now in Jesus Christ's name, I know you've got some stuff that's going on, but God says, I am living inside of you, and the outside will not dictate your insides. I'm telling you, I feel that in the Holy Ghost. My God. So if the Holy Spirit is living in us, would y'all agree or disagree? All right. This is what should be coming out of us. This... What I'm getting ready to read to you is Bible. It's biblical. This is what should be coming out of you if the Holy Spirit lives in you. You see, I think a lot of people think that the Holy Spirit lives in them. And they think they've been saved because they go to church. And they think they're saved because they tithe. They think they're saved because they're, they're better than the average person. I had a man I was, I was visiting with him probably about two months ago. I lives right down the road here. And I asked him, I said, man, won't you come to church? And he said, uh-uh. And I'm just going to tell you what he said. He says, a bunch of hypocrites out there. 
And I told him, I said, won't you come change it? Won't you come help us change? And then I got to break it down to him Kentucky style. I said, sir, all of us are filthy rags. All of us have things in our life that we need to work on. All of us are a work in progress. All of us are. But what if I told you that your insides were spotless? What if I told you that your inside, where the Holy Spirit is at, is sinless? Come on. Come on. I'm just telling y'all, this is what Jesus is telling, teaching me. Because I have justified my lifestyle for so much. It's saying because I was born on the wrong side of the tracks or I didn't have a daddy in my life or this happened to me or I lost two children and all these excuses, I was justifying my lifestyle to be mean. I know y'all don't. But here's what the Bible says. If the Holy Spirit lives in you, this is what should be coming out of you. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that lives in me is love, joy, peace, long suffering. How many of y'all understand that word long suffering? Yeah, he didn't say that you're going to suffer for a day or two, he said long suffering. And you know what's funny? He put this same qualification in marriage. <laughs> I'm just saying. I thought I'd give it free. 1 Corinthians 7 says one of those gifts is long-suffering. Kindness. So if you're mean-spirited, that's not God. That's not God coming, coming through you. Goodness. Faithfulness. I can't be faithful. If you've got God in you, watch this, you'll want to be faithful. That's right. Gentleness, you'll be gentle. And I'm, God's working on me. Listen, I'm a work in progress. You'll be gentle to people. And watch this last one, y'all ready? Self-control. 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 Praise team, you guys come. Self-control. You'll have self-control. That's what the Bible says. See, to have increase in your life, you must live an inside-out life. And I'm learning this. To have self-control, to have faithfulness, to have gentleness, to have goodness and kindness and long-suffering, peace, joy, love, you've got to live from the inside out. Because watch this, your outside can never do that. But the inside of you, where God lives, where Jesus lives, where the Holy Spirit lives, He lives in me. And if he lives in me, he'll come through me. Y'all got this? Amen? Y'all got the word today? Amen? Y'all get the word? Give God a hand praise in. Amen? Y'all get the word today? Man, I know it's tough. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. We got this, though. Because we got Jesus. Amen? And the Bible says, with Jesus, I can do all things through him who gives me what? The strength. Well, Brian, I feel weak, but he's strong in you. He's strong in you. Your outsides may be weak today, but inside of you, he is roaring like a lion. Inside of you is the gift of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, self-control. That's it. That's inside of you. And so 2018, Elkhorn Baptist Church, is going to be an inside-out year of increase. Y'all watch. If we let loose of what's inside of us, it's going to increase us outside. But if you allow circumstances, problems, issues, situations, family, church, leadership, all that stuff, all that stuff, all that stuff on the outside to affect your inside, you're going to have the opposite of the list I just read you. So I'm going to ask you, or do you have fruit of the Spirit coming out of you? Or do you have Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the opposite of the fruit of the Spirit? Do you have meanness coming out of you? Are you a peacemaker or a troublemaker? Do you have joy in your life? 
Are you unfaithful? Are you gentle and kind spirited? Do you have self control? So I'm just going to ask you, only you know you. But this sermon wrecked me. Because why? We all need to start living from the inside out. So I'm going to ask you this morning for a service. It's 10 after 9. If you need to go, you can go. But I'm going to ask you, how's your heart? How are you really? How are you really doing this morning? You can come to church, you can fake, you can con. And probably fool about 90% of people. Except the people who's got the spiritual dis discernment. And they can read you like clock. Someone asked you, how's your heart? <laughs> Do you have love this morning? Do you have joy this morning? What about peace? How many of you have truly have God peace right now? Peace. Peace. Kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Is that you this morning? If it is, praise God. But I'm believing after God gave me this message and plowed me with a, like a D9 dozer. Y'all are probably like me. There's probably some areas in your life that you really need to start working on. You know what I love about Elkhorn? We can be so brutally honest. All of us in here need to start living from the inside out. So if you would, stand with me. This altar, this river. God says the overflow of the river would be in your heart. So this, this altar, this river is open. And you come if God's dealing with you. If not, you're good. Just, hey, if not, y'all pray for me. <laughs> Please. Y'all pray for your pastor. Because I'm a work in progress. If somebody here today, you don't have no peace. You can stand there and look good all you want to. You don't have no peace. You're, you're doing the opposite of the fruit of the Spirit. So in Jesus' name, this altar, this river's open. Come. Just come on. You say, Brian, I'm waiting for them to start singing. No, if you have to wait for a song, nothing's going to move you. Just be honest this morning. Be honest with yourself. What's going on inside of you? What's going on inside of you, sir? Ma'am, what is going on inside of you? Because whatever's going on on the inside, I promise you, I promise you, it's going to come out on the outside. If you've got bitterness and anger, no self-control, it's going to come out. So, Father God, I've done what you told me to do. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. God bless these people as they come to the altar. Lord, I pray blessings upon them, their mind, that the fruit of the Spirit, their God, love, peace, patience, guidance, Lord, gentleness, joy, self-control, long-suffering to God will come through. So Lord, bless these beautiful people as we come, as we worship at this altar. In Jesus' name, amen. God's dealing with you, church. You come.